Well, it is the home edition of the Dreger Cafe. Normally, we're at the World Hockey Championships, and we focus on international play. Not allowed to do that. Sidney Crosby, kind enough to join us, and said it feels like the best way to start any conversation is to ask, how are you doing? So, how are you doing? Yeah, just, I think, like everyone else, just trying to make the best of the situation. A lot of waiting around, but that being said, uh, you know, everyone's got to stay healthy, and we just got to figure this out. There's no real blueprint for getting through this, so. Um, yeah, I think we're all just, you know, patiently waiting to see what happens here. Now, normally you wouldn't have a lot of, a lot of downtime at any point of the year, be it in season or during the, the off season. Are you a, a guy who, you know, spends any time playing video games? So if you're, if you're not training, what is it that you're doing to try and occupy part of your day? A lot of these kind of calls and <laughs> FaceTimes yeah. and yeah. that kind of thing, I know. Our team has done uh, just meetings once a week just to, you know, to keep everyone in the loop and, and obviously just kind of keep in touch that way as best we can, um, you know, training in the morning. And then, you know, we've had, uh, you know, we've had a lot of different ideas as far as when things might start up and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, just trying to just kind of waiting around, but just trying to stay active as much as possible. Yeah, you're communicating constantly, I presume, with, you know, your teammates and likely the coaching staff, maybe management of the Pittsburgh Penguins as well, just swapping ideas or trying to get a keener sense as to when this thing might turn around? Yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard because, you know, you look at state to state and there's just restrictions put in place. And as far as being able to project things, I think that's that's really the big challenge that we're dealing with. And then you know, even, you know, what our format's going to look like, how many teams are going to be involved. I mean, these are all the questions that everybody's asking and, you know, there's not a lot of answers right now. Do you hope that it'll be, you know, a little bit uh, easier to figure things out? But there's nothing you can draw, you know, draw off of that can kind of prepare you for this. And, and I think you just, you just have to make the best of it. You know, you keep saying that, but that's all you can really do. I mean, we're all, everybody's in the same boat here. Everyone's just kind of sitting around waiting to. You know, timing is everything, right? And it means everything here um, because you look down the calendar, you know what you should be doing this time of year at this place in, in May, and that's, you know, hopefully heavily involved in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So as a guy who trains really hard 12 months of the year, um, tell me how difficult you think it's going to be for the players to, to come back, no matter what that format is, how many games you get to play, be it play-in games, if it's a, a 2014 tournament, uh, or format, I should say, or if there are more than that in terms of regular season games, how tough is that going to be on the players to to get back to full speed? Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, there's there's no doubt that that's going to be the challenge that every team's trying to overcome, and, and individually as players, that's what um, you're trying to fight against. Just making sure that you know, you know, you're not rusty, that uh, that you're in as best shape as you can be. Uh, we don't know what the timeline would look like as far as a training camp or skating on your own leading up to a training camp. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of factors, but you know, you're used to a, a buildup in the season where, you know, the games start to get, you know, more tight, more intense leading into playoffs. There's kind of that progression where, you know, this year kind of jumping right into it. So however we figure it out, uh, it's going to be the same for everyone. And, you know, I think ultimately, you know, as long as it's a safe environment, guys will be excited to play and everyone's, you know, kind of a level playing field there. So that's all you can ask for. And, you know, I don't think you're going to find too many guys complaining at that point. I think it's it's just as, as long as it's done the right way. And as long as it's not too wacky, right? I mean, the Pittsburgh Penguins are a playoff team. So, you know, that, that would have unfolded regardless. So if you look at what's been speculated, and it is that 2014 format, whether or not they go through with it, again, it'll, it'll be dependent on the calendar at that stage. Um, but is it okay to go with a 2014 format as long as you're playing four rounds of the playoffs and not uh, an NCAA tournament type of uh, format like we talked about perhaps a few weeks ago? Yeah, I mean, I'd prefer that. And, and it's, there's so many factors, right? Like, the, the safety of players is number one. And if you're yeah. able to establish that, then, then, you know, you want to keep the integrity of what the playoffs have been for a long, long time. And uh, it's difficult to win the Stanley cup and you want to win it, you know, the right way. And um, you know, that's, you know, four best four or seven series. So yeah. um, that's, you know, that's how we know it. And 
you know, with a time like this, you know, we're all open to, to ideas and formats and things like that, but you hope that we can, we can keep that. After two plus months off, what would be your biggest concern? If, if you got the call in the next two, three weeks, hopefully within that range, if it's longer, uh, you know, you'll have to deal with it. But as a player, what would be your, your biggest concern after all that time off the ice? Uh, I wouldn't say I have any concerns. I think it's just get to work. You know, once yeah. you get the call, it's just a matter of, you know, trying to, trying to get on the ice and, you know, make sure that uh, you get rid of that rust as soon as possible. But um, I think, you know, guys at this point, they're used to training and being creative with what they have to do. We've had a lot of practice at it for the last couple of months. So I'm yeah. sure guys have found ways, but I think just, just making sure that you do have that, that little bit of time, building up to it so you don't have to jump in and go full tilt for a week or two and then play right in the game so it you know the longer amount of time you have obviously the better it is you've always been a, a community-minded man there's no question about that community means a lot to you uh, that goes without saying both in Pittsburgh and certainly around Canada uh, very soon after the tragic mass shooting in Nova Scotia you were quick to post a video. Was that important to you to, to do whatever you could do to, to reach out to the victims' families? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you see terrible things happen, you know, all the time. You never think it's going to happen, you know, where you live. And you hear that all the time from people that, that go through things like that. But, uh, you know, to see that happen, um, you know, you just, you never expect that. So it's a pretty tight-knit community. And I, and I know that you know, everyone was trying to do whatever they could to support. And I just wanted to be able to you know, show mine any way I could. You know, it's, it's tough to see. And, you know, everyone's doing their best to, to rally around one another. A couple of international questions quickly. Uh, Ray Ferraro and I had Jerome McGinley on the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast a couple of weeks ago. And obviously we talked about the golden goal. And uh, he remembers it probably just as vividly as you do. But he said what was unique about that goal was how you screamed his name. And he said there was a difference. It, this, this wasn't just a standard Iggy, I'm open. This was an Iggy, I'm open, and you need to get me the puck. <laughs> and uh, that's the way he tells the story. Is that how you remember it? Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I had a step there, and um, there was some room to get to the net. I, I don't think when I was open originally, I thought I probably had more room to take it to the net. But by the time, you know, the, the puck got there and the play was made, I think uh, I had to get it off pretty quick. And just the way it happened that fast and, you know, a little bit more room with being four on four. Uh, you could tell, like he said, in the desperation, my voice that I thought I had a good chance there. Even if it wasn't the greatest angle, it just felt like there was a little bit of daylight. He made a great play just to, I think he was falling down and, and make that play. I think he made it on his backhand, or maybe it was his forehand, but I know he was against the boards. And um, Yeah, just uh, a really heads-up play. It really was. Uh, he said he was also surprised that he was on the ice at that point <laughs> of the hockey game. So as we look back, I would say a pretty good call by Mike Babcock. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, with, uh, with Iggy, I think the, the biggest thing is shot. I mean, in a situation like that, he can score from anywhere in the zone. So, um, yeah, four on four with all that room and the way he shoots the puck, I would have thought it'd be the other way. I thought I'd be trying to set him up, but uh, I'm glad it worked out that whole, that whole tournament. Uh, he was so good with me and just staying positive. The puck wasn't really going in a lot. And he just continued to encourage me and said, don't worry, you're going to get a big one. And, you know, sure enough, he was right. TSN aired uh, the 87 Canada Cup Series over the course of this weekend. I, I'm sure you've seen it historically. I don't know if you had you know, time to, to pay any attention to it uh, this weekend. But with all due respect, because 2010 was specially in Vancouver, that 87 Canada Cup Series and watching the magic between Gretzky and Lemieux and you know the, the skating flow of Paul Coffey and the unbelievable international talent. Uh, you're a historian of the game. I mean... Uh, you know, when you think back to that 87 Canada Cup Series and what you've seen on video, what comes to mind? Just amazing hockey, and I've never actually watched all the games um, right through, and that's all my, my buddies were talking about this weekend <laughs> were, were those games. I was so jealous that, uh, <laughs> you know, they were watching them all. But, I mean, what comes to mind is just, you know, even what we were saying 
we were talking about this week and amongst each other was just probably some of the best hockey you'll ever see. For sure. um, just with the skill and combination of players and, and where they were in their careers and things like that. Uh, the rivalry. Yeah, the dramatics too, just how it all worked out. I mean, you see that goal time and time again, um, you know, with uh, with Mario. Just, uh, you know, I don't think Larry Murphy got a look at all there on that rush, but, uh, <laughs> but Mario buried it. It was, uh, yeah, that, that whole series is pretty incredible. It really was. Well, we've seen some incredible goals from you as well over time in the National Hockey League and internationally as well. Sid, thanks for doing this. I uh, look forward to seeing you back in NHL rink soon. And in the meantime, stay safe and be well. Okay. Thanks for having me. Stay healthy.